I'm going to go through how to create a project in Overleaf, clone it as a Git repository, and then add remotes to both Overleaf and to GitHub. So I'm, I began by going to Overleaf and signing in. If you haven't already signed in, you'll need to sign up and or sign in using whatever credentials you want to use. And then I'm going to create a new project in Overleaf. It could be a blank paper, it could be using one of the templates, whatever you prefer for what you're doing. Um, I'll do the sample paper. Okay, and while that's compiling, I'm going to select the URL at the top, okay, and copy that URL. So we're going to notice that the URL begins with www.overleaf.com and then some other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the whole thing. And then if I look elsewhere on Overleaf, there's documentation that describes how to do this. Okay. So here's the important part. I'm going to do git clone, and then I'm going to use the URL, except where it said www, I'm going to replace it with git. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to wherever it is that I want to do my cloning. And then I'm going to do git clone, and then the URL. Now the last part after the pound sign you can delete. And then the www you need to change to git. And then by default when you clone something, it will give you the same name as the last part of the URL, so I'm going to give it a different name so that I get a sensible directory instead of this ridiculous one with the numbers. Okay, so my overleaf repo.get. Okay. Okay. All right, so it cloned it. So now I'm going to cd to that directory. And lo and behold, all of the files that were in Overleaf are there. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to look at the .git config file. And I see that there is currently a remote called origin with the URL to the Overleaf repository. Okay. Now there's a couple of ways that I can mess with this depending on whether you want to just edit something directly or whether you want to use the get tools. So I'm going to eventually have two remotes here. Uh, to make it explicitly clear which is which, I'm going to rename origin to overleaf. Okay, so I'm going to get remove or sorry, get remote help Okay, get remote re rename. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to get remote rename origin overleaf. I could have also removed it and then added it. That would have been equivalent. Okay, and now if I cat the git config, I have a remote called overleaf. Okay, now if I put new files in here, <laughs> So let's say uh, I want to create a supplementary file. Maybe in your examples, you might be needing to upload a, a, an image file or a PDF that you include. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to create a new dummy text file. Let's call that uh, Hello World. Okay, That's all it's going to include right now. Okay, and now if I run git status, I have a shortcut so that git st for me runs git status. Um, how can I see that? In my dot git config, I have an alias so that if I type st, it knows I mean status, and if I accidentally type psuh, it knows that I mean push. Okay. Um, 
All right, so get status. There's this new file. I'm going to now get add dummy.tech. If you had a graphics file, you would do the same thing. Add the graphics file. Uh, and then get status again. OK, now it's ready to be committed. Added dummy file. And now I'm going to get push, but not origin. I'm going to push to overleaf master. Master is the name of the branch that I am on currently. So you can have potentially lots of different branch names. And if you had a different branch that you were working on, you would say the name of that branch instead of master. But master is the name of the branch that I'm working on here. Br master is the name of the default branch in a Git repository. Uh, so if you haven't explicitly created any other named branches, master will be what you're working on. Okay, so now if I go back to Overleaf, to my paper, I see dummy.tech shows up right there. Okay, likewise if I had made edits to my main tech and committed them and pushed them, they would show up here too. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to go to GitHub. And in this case, you guys already have a GitHub URL, a repository that has been created for your homework files. But if you hadn't, you could just create your own repository in GitHub. New repository, sample, overleaf, bridge, okay. If you are registered with GitHub as a student, then at the moment, you can get free private repositories, meaning that nobody else can see them. Um, but you have to, I believe, register yourself. It's a fairly easy process. Basically, you just take a picture of your student ID, upload it, make sure that you're, use, you're registered with GitHub using your university.edu email address, and then in a day or so, they verify you as a student and you have access to this. No, it doesn't need to be private. I mean, uh, well, if you're doing it for homework, then it probably should be private so that other people can't see it. Uh, but in, in your case for this class, I've already created private repositories for you. So you can just use those. Uh, OK. So now GitHub is already giving me the instructions for what I need to do. I'm going to do a remote add, or rather down here, a remote add with this URL, but I'm not going to call it origin. I'm going to call it GitHub. So git remote add, GitHub. Uh, I have SSH keys set up on my account, which allows me to use this notation. You probably don't. And so you would probably, instead of doing this, it would be HTTPS something, something, something. OK, uh, so it would be this instead. Like that, OK? All right. And then if I look at dot git slash config, then I see I have two, I have one branch called master. I have a remote called overleaf that points to the overleaf URL. I have a remote called GitHub that points to the GitHub URL. At the moment, the GitHub, there's still nothing here. Okay, so what do I do? I can say git push GitHub master. Okay, and now I refresh, and lo and behold, there are my files from that started out in Overleaf. Okay, so GitHub and Overleaf are not by default going to talk to each other. You have to use this intermediate mechanism of your cloned repository with two remotes to get them to talk to each other. So 
you're going to do your work on Overleaf, and then when you've made changes, you will get pull Overleaf. Okay, so you will pull your changes from Overleaf to your local repository here. So let's do that. I'll go here to my Overleaf repository and change something. Hi there. Okay, and I'll let it compile. And there's my change. Shows up in the PDF right there. Hi there. Okay, and now I'm going to do get pull overleaf. And there's a change. I can look in main.tech and see that what I just added is in fact there. I can also do get log. And you'll notice that, that overleaf and the git overleaf bridge automatically put in this log message along with the change. And if I look at that change, I can do git show and that commit, and it'll show as a git commit what I changed. Okay. All right. Uh, and now finally, I can do git push GitHub master and push that change back to over or back to GitHub. And yep, there indeed that change was made. Okay. And so that allows you to do that kind of interactive development. Um, this is also really useful, by the way, if you're co-authoring a paper with somebody or a group of people, and some of them prefer, some people in the group prefer to edit directly in Overleaf, and other people in the group prefer to edit on their laptops using their own LaTeX editor and maintain the repository using Git. This way, both of those groups of people can, have, can be satisfied so personally, when I'm writing papers with some of my co-authors, several of them prefer to use Overleaf. I prefer to do my editing locally, and then we can all just do this, and it all just works.